Fifty years ago, this dream of conquering gravity remained just that, a fairy tale image. Until one night in 1847, when a Parisian audience sat down to witness the latest creation of the man they now call the father of modern magic. The illusion was the ethereal suspension, and it was inspired by tales from the Far East. This is the story of how the dream of levitation and fantasies of the mysterious East combined to usher in magic's golden age. Magic entered what has come to be known as its golden age in the early 1800s, a time when magicians were traveling the world looking for inspiration. In the 19th century, there was a particularly increased communication between the East and the West, the colonialism of, of Britain. The West was becoming more familiar with the mystical East, but yet it still remained mysterious. Very early on, there were, were reports from Western travelers of extraordinary things they saw in India, people doing with snakes, doing, um, mutilating their bodies, hanging from hooks. These stories came back that created the mystique or the image of a place where miraculous things happened. In 18... 32 or so, the British press begin to report uh, an heir Brahmin, uh, a man supposedly called Shishal in Madras, who apparently can sit in the air, and they include uh, an etching of uh, Shishal uh, sitting cross-legged in the air, his hand resting on a staff which is connected to the ground. This becomes a, a very popular story and the, the British press seem to be completely uh, unable to explain how this bizarre illusion takes place. Westerners have always been fascinated by exotic stories of the East. Whether they're fables or fact, it doesn't really matter, but the East holds something extraordinary. It took a very special performer to make use of the stories of the floating air Brahmin. His name was Jean Eugène Robert Houdin. Robert Houdin is the great transitional figure in the history of magic. He's the, he's the benchmark of which we measure before him and after him. Before Robert Houdin, magicians presented themselves as wizard-like figures belonging to the world of the superstitious and the supernatural. Robert Houdin revolutionized magic. They call him the father of modern magic because he discarded the big hat. He discarded the big, you know, regalia type of outfits and dressed in normal, accessible evening clothes. He was the David Blaine and the Darren Brown of his time. He wore the style of the day, very slim, whereas in the past people could say, it's under your cloak. Uh, they changed it to, it's up your sleeve. Um, it's just, he became a modern day performer. In the 1840s, Robert Houdin had opened a small magic theater in Paris. His new style of magic quickly took off when he first introduced his interpretation of the Indian mystic's levitation. He called this the ethereal suspension. If you had bought a ticket in Paris for the Théâtre de Robert Houdin, uh, based on the advertising of the ethereal suspension, when you walked in and took your seat, there would be a tiny proscenium arch, and it would be an elegant salon and you would sit there with your contemporaries, the uh, elite of Paris, the sophisticates, and Robert Houdin's son came on. He was a tiny boy, tiny boy. Uh, Robert Houdin would take his walking stick and place it uh, next to the boy.
Then they would take a jar of ether and wave the smelliness around under the boy. And then the boy would go to sleep and would be lighter than air, which was, of course, what ether was. And he would pick the boy up and he would just be weigh nothing. And there he would be balanced on one stick. The illusion instantly captured the public imagination. You're dealing with the enlightenment around now. So he used the newest invention of the time, ether, because you're moving from regular consciousness now to an extraordinary altered state of consciousness. So he used this scientific hook to bring it to the galleries of Europe and to, you know, entertain the minds of the time. There's no question that it was a great illusion, a fantastic illusion. And it started everyone talking because what they saw was they saw a body defying gravity. And uh, it's been performed in different forms up until today. It's still a very popular illusion, which proves how important it was 150 years ago. One of the things about magic is that there's nothing that's truly original under the sun. It's all been done before. So what comes into play instead is personality, presentation, uh, a sense of what the audience wants. You can give a magician a trick and a script, but if it's not inspired, it's going to fall flat. You can have an inspired magician with a great script, but if it doesn't have a good trick or a good effect, you have no theater. You really need a combination of three elements to create magical presentation. Script, the story, the effect, and inspiration. All new tricks do eventually become old hat, but in the hands of a great magician like the German conjurer Hans Moretti, the by then 140-year-old ethereal suspension gained a new lease of life. It's placed really on the Robert Houdin ethereal levitation with the little boy. Um, basically the same look to it, you know, except that Hans Moretti made a paper tree and Helga stands uh, with, with her arms above this. And then he lifts her legs up until she's horizontal. And she wasn't a small lady. And then he takes a pair of sh big scissors, big shears, and he starts chopping this the run under her legs, and because that all falls down, and she's, she's apparently resting in space on top of this very flimsy paper tree. And to this day, the magician has sought to convince his audience that he has the power to defy gravity. But why does this idea have such a potent appeal to magic? I think humans have always been fascinated with flight. Whether it's watching birds soar overhead effortlessly, looking up at the vast expanse of the stars. In early cultures, the shamans would travel to other worlds and fly and, ha and gain these miraculous powers and then tell the tribe about them. And the myths and the legends would start. Witches, shamans, sorcerers of all kinds have always drawn to themselves the idea of of being able to fly. It's, it's the great supernatural thing to be able to do, to, to drift above the ground. Today, magicians are always improving their techniques for levitation uh, because essentially it's our, I think it's our desire.